Hello everyone, my name is Arnold Bosman and I am with Transmissible, Public Health Learning Support. This is Transmissible Briefs. Today we ask the question, when we want to control COVID-19, which strategies work best to interrupt transmission of the SARS coronavirus 2? In the next five minutes, we will summarize a news item that was published on nature.com on the 27th of April. The item explains what researchers around the world are doing to study the different interventions to stop COVID spread and how they try to disentangle the effects of individual measures from other trends that influence the transmission of the coronavirus. In the coming weeks, researchers build a database that brings together information on hundreds of different interventions that were introduced worldwide. The database is prepared for the World Health Organization WHO by a team at the London School for Hygiene and Tropical Medicine. This will include data that is collected by 10 groups that track interventions worldwide. In fact, most of these groups have already been doing that since the beginning of the pandemic. This includes teams at the University of Oxford, the Complexity Science Hub in Vienna, public health organizations and non-profit organizations such as ACAPS, which analyzes humanitarian crisis. The London School has recruited an impressive corps of 1,100 volunteers to work on cleaning and combining the information. The dataset will be open for anyone to use and will be improved for future releases. The Vienna team is looking for patterns and their methods include clustering countries by how early in the epidemics they began interventions and by the total number of restrictions introduced. In Europe, for example, algorithms group Sweden the United Kingdom and the Netherlands together as countries that acted relatively slowly. In the early stages of their epidemics, all three countries implemented herd immunity strategies, which involved few measures or ones that relied on voluntary compliance, although later the United Kingdom and the Netherlands switched to more aggressive responses, including countrywide lockdown. Meanwhile, Germany and Austria stand out as nations that adopted aggressive and early control strategies compared with Italy, France and Spain, which implemented similar measures, including lockdown, but later in their epidemics. So far, Germany and Austria have per capita seen a fraction of the deaths from COVID-19 of these other countries. Ideally, researchers want to be able to forecast how adding and removing individual interventions would change the number of infections over time. Policymakers could use such predictions, together with the data on intensive care capacity, to make decisions on whether to reopen schools, for example. Without a vaccine or effective treatment, stopping transmission remains the only defense against COVID-19. So far, international organizations that specialize in epidemic and pandemic control, such as the World Health Organization and the European Center for Disease Control, they emphasize that traditional contact tracing and isolation is among the most cost-effective and time-tested methods to stop epidemics like these. This requires a large group of people that follow a strict protocol of identifying suspect cases, testing them, isolating the positive patients and tracing all their contacts so that they can be quarantined. So until the massive new database will un unveil its secrets and tell us which ways are the best, our best bet so far is still an old-fashioned public health response.